So the Los Angeles Clippers would be absolutely crazy to actually trade PG-13 at this point. But but these are the Clippers we're talking about. You know, the team that just spent $2 billion on an arena that houses uh, under 20,000 people. I am just saying these are still the Clippers, despite the fact that they are owned by Steve Ballmer and Microsoft money. So what will the Los Angeles Clippers do with PG-13? Now, I, I started to think about this a little bit and I went back and I, I looked at PG-13 because everybody's always talking about how PG-13 is always injured. And yes, he has been injured. But did you know PG-13 actually played in 74 games last season? I am just saying, after four or five years in a row of not breaking 60, PG-13 actually delivered from a game-playing perspective. He also averaged just under 30 points for the season, five boards, and three and a half assists the three and a half assists a little low for what we'd expect from pg-13 but it still is really solid plus he's got one of the great podcasts as well look pg-13 absolutely should not in any way be put on the trade block by the los angeles clippers but you know that these are the clippers so if the Clippers do move PG-13, who will they trade uh, with um, to actually make that happen? Now, one of the um, options is up here in the Bay Area, and that is if Clay Thompson doesn't re-sign with the Golden State Warriors, that would then free up the Warriors to actually offer three players in exchange for PG-13. Now, the three players, um, most likely two out of three would be uh, Chris Paul and Jonathan Kaminga. Um, and then the third player, there's a, a series of players that it could be like a, a Gary Payton the second um, is, is one of those options. Now, if you're the Clippers and, and you are going into a brand new arena and you just spent two billion dollars are you not doing everything that you could possibly do to actually make pg-13 want to come back i am just saying are you not offering the best possible deal that you can give him are you not offering a no trade clause why is this even a conversation in the media at this point it should not happen now there's also been rumors that PG-13 might be traded at some point to the New York Knicks. Now, if if he gets traded to the New York Knicks, who would they? Uh, who would the uh, Clippers actually get back? Well, uh, Mitchell Robinson, Bajan Bogdanovich, Alec Burks, a couple draft picks. I mean, at what point do any of those pieces actually help? make people happy about all the money that they spent to actually go to a Los Angeles Clipper game. Remember, this is the Clippers in a brand new arena for their very first year. They should be doing everything they can possibly do to actually put out the best possible team in their first year in their brand new arena. This whole trade uh, PG-13 thing makes absolutely no sense. Now, if you're the Clippers and you have a choice between keeping Paul George and letting James Harden walk, I mean, I think at the end of the day, that choice is pretty simple. But if you're able to, at the very least, bring back most of the pieces and the primary pieces that you had on that Clipper team last year, then certainly you should go ahead and do it, at least for the first half of the season. It makes absolutely no sense to actually let PG-13 walk out the door at this point. All right, North America, I want to know what you think. Will the Clippers be the Clippers and actually screw this whole thing up? 
Odds are, according to the Magic 8 Ball, yes. I want to know what you have to say, North America. Go ahead and drop in your comments. All right. Uh, hey, uh, check out our big sports website at underrated.media and sign up for what I believe is the best newsletter in the business, uh, our underrated newsletter as well. All right, for the underrated, I am Dave DeBaugh wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing day.